with bombs, we're trying to create that element of excitement. There's an offense and there's a defense strategy. And bombs give a really kind of mental way to kind of start that battle. So if you go to a particular location on the map, let's say, and you bring some friends, you know, they basically set up a tank around an area. You know, we want players to be able to attack that, so they've got a reason to defend it. There's also the NPC side, which is we've got bases now with the ability to have ground turrets on them. And these can include guns, but also missiles as well. And they can be quite effective at kind of keeping players out, but we want something to counter that. And a way to counter that as a rather fundamental force is a very large bomb, which can kind of push through some of those defences and give players the other advantage, which is you can come in, you can bring your big ship in, you can, you know, you can bomb some of the early defences, and then you can use some of your smaller ships that you have with you, you know, to kind of get in there and to take that ground location away from them. We wanted bombs to come in with a really big impact. We wanted a big ship that could carry a big bomb. You know, the A2 carrying the size 10, it basically, you know, allowed us to do that. We didn't want a guided bomb or anything like that. We wanted to give you like a high tech solution to the targeting. So, you know, although you've got this massive, powerful bomb, we wanted there to be some skill in trying to hit the target with it. So we put bombs in an operator mode, um, which is very, very similar to missiles, apart from when you have bombs selected on your ship, you will get your bomb UI. We've got the visual space in front of you, which allows you to see where your bomb will drop if you drop it at any point. But we've also given you an option to create a reference point, and that will allow the UI on the hood itself to tell you where to move to. And then when you're flying towards this, it'll tell you whether you move to, need to speed up, move left and right. And then as you move towards it, you'll see a circle. Um, and this gives you the reference point of where the bomb's going to drop. And then if you get it right, and if you get the timing right, depending on physics and if you've got any wind or anything that can affect it in the time as well, it will drop within that um, point that you've referenced. But in some future patches, we're looking at you know, supporting a full bombing station on the year two, for example. Um, and this can include things like, you know, a remote camera looking down at the bomb, which will hopefully, in terms of our goals with this, is to move the advantage from the pilot being the person that controls the bomb to the bomber um, station, you know, because we want people to have these roles on these ships, um, you know, that really make a difference. So, you know, even if you're not within the blast radius of the bomb, you've, you've, you've still got a chance of damaging and hurting players within the vicinity of the physical blast itself as well. So that's, you know, that's, you've got to be quite careful because it's quite a big radius. Um, so make sure you release it at the right time. But apart from that, have fun blowing stuff up. This first iteration of bombing aims to bring functionality to the upcoming Hercules A2. And like all features, we'll continue to evolve and iterate with testing and feedback from you before rolling out to other spacecraft that can make use of this potentially devastating new feature. And speaking of the Hercules A2, it's set to arrive in the upcoming Alpha 315, so let's go ahead and take the last few minutes of this quarter's last episode to take one more look at what all is making its way to the Persistent Universe in the Patch Report. Let's begin right at the very top of the list. Alpha 315 is more than just another quarterly patch. When this one drops, it'll be the biggest step yet in realizing that vision of death of a spaceman set forth at the very beginning of the crowdfunding campaign. And that begins with everything under the umbrella of healing tier zero. It starts with the addition of down states. No longer will every ding and scrape a player gets send them directly to death. These downstates allow for and encourage group participation so that players can better keep each other in the fight, picking each other up and pushing forward like it's Black Friday and the store just got 3090s back in stock. And when they are picked up, 
players may discover new injury states like broken arms and legs that impair their ability to fly or otherwise traverse the universe, and that's where the healing namesake of the feature comes in, with the ability to administer treatment to players and NPCs alike. It'll be a big change to life in the verse, certainly not one that makes life any easier for our spacefaring adventurers. But this challenge and others coming down the road should lead to a more complex and rewarding gameplay experience for all when all is said and done. And speaking of challenging experiences, the new inventory revamp is here! The new inventory revamp is here! With the death of global inventory and the implementation of local to vehicle to external to personal inventory, the planning, considerations, and ultimately choices we make as players have never been more important or impactful to our gameplay experience. What's my stash like on Hurston? Do I have enough ammo on Microtech to do what I want to do? What planet did I leave my multitude on? Did I leave my keys in here? As with healing, tactical decisions are now coming to the forefront of life in the persistent universe. And between the two, who and what you bring with you becomes the essential question before any new mission or adventure. But two other new features arrive with Alpha 315 to help with your inventory needs. The first being the Knickknacks Asset Manager, essential to helping you track and maintain where everything you have in the verse is stashed or located, and Loot Generation, to help when you find yourself alone in the barren wastelands of Hurston or the magnificent desolation of Yila. Loot Generation works with the external inventory system to give players more reward for their increased risk in the field and it's just one more way Alpha 315 looks to reshape daily life in the persistent universe from this point forward. And when we talk about increased risk in the field, we have to include the new Infiltrate and Defend missions, with new tactically based objectives like having to avoid security for completion, or attacking players can't kill any defenders, or classic defend objectives like repel all waves or prevent the destruction of an item or person. These new mission types have a variety of modifiers to keep things fresh, and will continue to evolve beyond their initial implementation in the upcoming Alpha 315. Of course, if increased risk in the field isn't your thing, you can take to the skies above in the new Hercules A2 from Crusader Industries, first vehicle of its kind to use the new bombing mechanics showcased earlier to safely deliver death and destruction from far above the chaos below. Plus, the A2 just looks cool when it makes the big boom boom. In 315, it joins its C2 and M2 brethren to complete the Hercules line of stunning behemoth monsters from Crusader Industries. Of course, how safe the Hercules might be up in the skies might depend on two additional ships coming later in the Alpha 315 branch cycle, including the Airy Starfighter and Redeemer. Whether they attack or defend, they will certainly be looking to bring the pain when they arrive, and we'll be talking more about these two in depth when we get closer to their intended release during Alpha 315's Intergalactic Aerospace Expo event. Outside the Persistent Universe, or perhaps deep inside in the fictional game within a game, Arena Commander's Broken Moon Map is getting a makeover with new tech and features that have come online since the original was first introduced including a more diverse and expansive map space and an improved scoreboard UI created in building blocks for faster performance and improved maintenance ability going forward. Flash, no, not anymore. Bam, 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 bam. Of course, back in the persistent universe, let's look at all the new places you'll go in Alpha 315, including the new Crusader showroom on Orizon. Crown Jewel Showcase of the entire Crusader ship line, it's your one-stop shop for the best-looking spacecraft in the galaxy, where you can pick up the Mercury and Hercules right away, the Ares when it comes online later in Alpha 315, and then one day, my favorite ship in the galaxy, the Genesis Starliner. Someday. Then again, who flies around in stock spaceships? That's where Cousin Crows comes in, also new to Orison, where players will get the chance to trick out their spacecraft with new components and libraries. Well, we'll talk about what else when we get closer to getting there. But Cousin Crows, welcome to the verse. 
And in places you may want to avoid going, the variety of hospitals and space clinics arrive in Alpha 315 to put players back together when the worst of the worst occurs. These include new locations on Crusader, Microtech, Grimhex, and a variety of smaller installations and space stations throughout the Stanton system. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that it's better to be the bomber than the bombie. That hospitals are a nice place to visit, but you wouldn't want to live there. Although players like me probably will anyway. And that it can't be said enough, Alpha 315's new healing, inventory, and loot mechanics will make this patch unlike any other that's come before it. Now that's all for our ISC this quarter as we go into prep for our 316 shows, and especially the upcoming Digital Citizen Con on October 9th where you can join us in once again taking a look at the future of Star Citizen. Check out the recently launched CitizenCon.com for more details. Until then, I'm Jared Huckabee, and uh, see you at CitizenCon. <laughs>